Welcome back to Fashion Hair. So time for my preview for the 2024 uh, Formula E Shanghai e -Pri. Of course, the uh, first race at this track, the uh, Shanghai International Circuit. And for those of you who watch Formula One, of course, it's a track that you know quite well. Nonetheless, if it's not a track that you, if, uh, if you don't watch F1, you know, maybe it's uh, not super familiar to you. Of course, uh, it's a purpose-built circuit, uh, and we're very likely to have Peloton-style racing that we saw uh, in um, uh, in Italy, uh, in uh, yeah, in Italy, uh, as well as in Sao Paulo, uh, because of you know the temperatures. I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, battery duating might be an issue this weekend with the hot temperatures. And obviously, uh, because it's a purpose-built circuit, quite wide, quite wider than what you would normally see in Formula One, uh, we're expected to see lots of overtakes. Uh, of course, this is going to be the fourth race in uh, China. We had two races previously in Beijing, uh, near basically the Olympic venue, and also one race in Sanya, which of course was the last time we raced in China back in 2019. That race was won by uh, Jean-Eric Byrne uh, from um, uh, Oliver Rowland in second for Nissan, and uh, Antonio Felix da Costa was in third uh, for BMW back then. Uh, some of the notable moments from that race was the uh, big crash with uh, a lap to go between Degrassi, Boemi, and Robin Freund. Uh Sims was also involved in the crash and a couple other drivers, uh, including Sam Bird and Stoffel Van Dorn, uh, retired pretty early on. Now for the track itself, 3.051 kilometers. Uh, we're going to have 29 laps on Saturday, 28 on Sunday. Uh, the drivers will have 38.5 kilowatt hours of energy available to them and we're going to have one uh, six minute attack mode or maybe it's going to be split into but anyway six minutes of attack mode total uh, for this weekend and attack mode uh, will be located on the outside of turn two now in terms of uh, where you can overtake around this track uh, I think because it's so wide pretty much any corner except for possibly the final turn 11 12 chicane could be seen as an overtaking spot. Uh, you have turn one, two, three, obviously the really, really long right-hander, which then turns into a uh, left-hander with that elevation change. A really tricky corner, especially with the low downforce uh, Formula E cars. And you have the short straight going into turn six with the hairpin. Hairpin, a pretty natural spot to make an overtake. We could see a lot there this weekend. Then you have these two sweeping fast uh, corners, turn seven, turn eight might see uh, cars trying to stick around the outside of uh, turn seven and get the inside line in turn eight. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, uh, for the schedule this weekend, Friday practice uh, on uh, set five o'clock local time. Uh, for that session, weather is expected to be 26 degrees, partially sunny. Then we get to Saturday, FB2, eight in the morning, qualifying 10.20 in the morning, and then race 3.03 p.m. local time. Again, partially sunny, but temperature a little bit hotter, 27 degrees Celsius. Then we get to Sunday, uh, hottest temperatures of the weekend, it seems, uh, particularly for the afternoon session. FP3, eight, 8 in the morning, qualifying 1020, and then race 303 local, local time. But those uh, afternoon temperatures of 34 degrees Celsius will be very hot. And because it's in China, it should be humid as well. So it'll be interesting to see the effect that has on both the drivers as well as on the cars themselves. And for Sunday, again, Sunday, partially cloudy. Now, uh, just finishing up before we, uh, one final note before we get into the standings coming into this race, uh, Porsche have committed to the Gen 4 of the Formula E, so that's great to see that we're getting another manufacturer committed to the series long term. Uh, definitely shows that uh, the series, I think, is going in the right direction. Now, uh, before, for standings, uh, Cassie, Nick Cassie leads the way for Jaguar, 140 points followed up by Pascal Verlein in second, 124. Uh, Roland third, 118. Dennis fourth, 102. And then Evans in fifth on 97. And the fact that four of the top five are the four protect, uh, title protagonists from last year really shows kind of the year to year consistency in the Gen 3 era, or in, I guess, the first two years of Gen 3, as well as the fact that these four drivers have really, are really the four that I feel have been some of the best performing drivers with these cars. Of course, Roland, uh, kind of the odd man out guy who kind of left F Formula E mid-season last year. Uh, obviously a fantastic year, and at this point, kind of an outsider for title. 
Then we get to the team's title. I think not as going to be as hotly contested as it was last year when it went down to the final race. At this point, Jaguar 237 points, Porsche second 183, and then Nissan third 144. The fact that you have both Cassidy and Evans performing at a pretty high level, and the fact that uh, for Porsche, DeCosta hasn't quite had the results of uh, either Cassidy or Evans or Bearline for that matter, uh, I think really kind of holds them back. Same, uh, you can say the same for Nissan uh, in third. Uh, where Sasha van again hasn't really performed the same level as Oliver Rowland as well as the teams in fourth uh, Andretti where again you know kind of a one-man show with Jake Dennis so uh, in, that, in that respect you know Jaguar really looked like uh, the odds on favor to win that uh, team's championship and I think at this point highly likely to do so now finishing up this video some predictions for the weekend uh, I think I'm gonna go a bit bold I'm gonna go with Oliver Rowland for the win uh, obviously one out on track first time in Misano and looks very close to being able to do the, du the double but unfortunately software issue didn't allow that to happen and the fact is with the really high temperatures we're expected to have uh, with the results we had in, Bra in Brazil which was probably up to this point uh, the hottest race of the season you know obviously that's where Sam Bird was uh, one McLaren uh, which is a Nissan powered car so I'm going to go with Oliver Rowland for the win uh, second and third I'm going to go with uh, Nick Cassidy and Pascal Verline top two in the championship pretty safe bet uh, to get uh, a podium at least for one of the two races this weekend so yeah really interested to see how this coast uh, works obviously it's a purpose-built venue a lot of uh, space for spectators so I'm curious to see what the turnout is like this weekend obviously I hope it uh, turns out very well but you know there's already rumblings that this will be kind of a one-off event and we won't see this race again. So might as well watch it uh, when it's the only uh, time that it will take place, perhaps. So anyway, there you go. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.